Hello Smart Sky, hello Joy. Welcome back to the Endgame series. Hello Mind Delos. So as you know, we are doing an Endgame series and we already completed the chapter on Pawn Endgames and Night Endgames yesterday. So today we are going to begin with a Bishop Endgames. So this is going to be a long chapter because in bishop endgames we have different kind of endgames like same color bishops, opposite color bishops, then bishop versus pawns. So this is going to be a long journey, this chapter. So let's begin. But before I start with this bishop endgames, um, Genie in the bottle sent me uh, an endgame about pawn and an game about pawn and games and uh, let's discuss that first and then we begin with this chapter hello james blunder how are you doing so james blunder is uh, playing in streamers battle on saturday and he has created a team on leeches called blunder master so everybody do join his team and uh, let's play for him so let us first check this end game all right just a moment so this was the game sent to me by genie in the bottle and uh, as you know we have been discussing a lot of pawn in games so this is a recent game thank you james Ponder, for your donation you are very generous and also crazy <laughs> what time is the streamers battle i think uh, Badr can tell tell that to you i'm not sure about the exact timing but he can tell us the time and uh, more information about it Okay, so this was the game sent to us. It is a game between So Wesley and Abdul Sattarov, played in the recent speeches championship. And uh, we have reached the pawn in game here, as you see. And this was the critical position of the game. And here white played king f4. And the winning uh, idea was to play g5 here. And that makes a big difference as we will see in this game so g5 i can't make moves on this board but let's just say g5 uh, fg king g5 and now the threat is king at six and if white and if black plays king g7 white plays c5 and that's the difference as uh, in the game so in the game this happened and black got to play c5 which is a big difference because now uh, white spawn is stuck on c4 and both sides played a lot of moves after this and now there is no time because if white rushes to c5 to take the pawn black goes to the edge pawn and then both queen at the same time and it will be a draw the difference was if white pawn is on c5 then white queens first and wins this game so also in the end, this was actually a fast game. So black played here king g7. There was also chance for white uh, to play. Thank you for following. To play at six check and then win. But a draw was agreed after some moves later. Thank you for following. Okay, so this was the game. And uh, let's get back to bishop and games now. Thank you for following. And thank you Ginny for bringing this game to our attention. Very interesting. So you see pawn and games are not so easy. And uh, many times we miss these ideas during the games. Uh, one moment. Badr is sending the link but Nightbot is not letting us 
So I will do it for him. I will do it for him. So this is the link Badur is posting. And it is about streamers battle on Saturday. So you can check the information of the tournament right there. Hello everybody. So let's begin with Bishop and Games now. So first we are talking about fortresses and they say there are many endgames in which the only way to defend consists of constructing a fortress. Yes, everybody do join Badur's team uh, called Blunder Masters on Leeches. And do check out his uh, club and then he is playing his first tournament on Saturday, Streamers Battle. So let's all support him. I will also be playing in the team. And he himself is leading the team. So do join and do support him. Okay, so now first position. Do you follow a book for the series? Yes, we are checking from Dovretsky's endgame book. White seeking c2. Black king f8, pawn on h6, bishop g6. So first let us understand the different kind of fortresses in this uh, end games. And again, please don't send me game requests right now because I'm not accepting game challenges. As you see, we are in training series. Have a nice stream. Okay, James Blunder, and good luck to you for Saturday. So now if the bishop does not control the rook on queening squares, so you see the squares, the color of this is different. The weaker side has only to get his king into the corner and it will be a draw. So when there is a rook spawn, so a file and h file, and the bishop, so here, it does not matches the square, the queening square. It is a draw if black reaches the corner. This is the first thing we should know about this end games. And if this is black to play, black will just play king g8. And this is a drawn end game. Now we have to know about different kind of techniques to cut off the king. So let's say it is white to play and if the bishop stands on f5 so the same position bishop stands on f5 this is the technique for white he can play bishop e6 and as you see he is stopping the king from going towards the pawn and next when the king moves to e8 or e7 we play h7 and we win this hello k simple Also, there is a second idea. So this is first idea to cut off the king. The second idea is, let's say black's king stands on f6. Yes, black king stands on f6. Then our idea should be to control this diagonal and try to keep the bishop on e8 or h5. And then we are stopping the king from going towards the pawn. And now white will win this endgame. So we just play the king or just wait and play bishop e8 and give up the move. These all squares are controlled. And next move black king we can play at 7 and win this. So this is the second technique to cut off the king.
But in this position, white can't do much. Because even if it's white to play, let's say he tries to play bishop h7, stopping black from going to the corner. Black plays king f7, king d3, king f6. Now this is the threat to go and take the pawn. This is a draw because now king g5 is the threat and even if we try to move the bishop, let's say to even f5, black will go again king f7 with this threat trying to go in the corner and we just have to do this reputation and not much progress is possible in this position. Let's try bishop f5 but still black's king just moves to f6 and f7 with these two threats and the king is too far away to make any progress. Yes. Now the same position with a slight difference. So, same position with a slight difference. And that is, instead of king being on c2, they place the king on d2. Bishop g6, pawn h6. So in the previous position, king was on c2, now the king is on d2, one square near. And this makes a difference because now white plays bishop at 7 king f7, king e3, king f6 and king f4, stopping king g5. So this is the difference. And this was the introduction of this chapter, that uh, these are the different techniques that we can use. White king c6, black king c8, pawns on a3, bishop b4, black pawn on a4 and b5. White to play and win. Bishop d6, king d8. So now if we remove these both pawns for black, we know that it will be a draw because this is not the color of the queening square and black just has to go to the corner and make a draw. But he has an extra pawn on b5 and that is why he loses this endgame. Because he has an extra pawn. Yes, you are right, Baggio. We have to try to stalemate the king and force him to play b4. So this is extra pawn actually is losing for black. If he did not have this pawn, it will be a draw. So now we have to find a way to stalemate the king. Let's say in this position maybe we can bring bishop to c7 and somehow, how is it losing, yes? Bishop d6 must keep king out. This is white to play and win. We have to try to stalemate black king. Let's say if we play bring the bishop to c7, he has no move to play except pawn to b4 and then we take and that is how we have to win this.
bishop a5 yes even i think it's bishop a5 so now we play bishop a5 black has to play king b8 thank you for following black jumbo now king has to go to b8 and then we can go bishop b6 hello mantala welcome to the bishop endgame series today bishop b6 now he can play king c8 or king a8 if he goes king c8 we can finally play bishop c7 and the king is trapped thank you for following mighty and he can play b4 we takes and this is winning because now it's no more a rook spawn and we just stop this with the bishop and win with this just move there so there is one more line so after first move bishop a5 king b8 bishop b6 if he plays king a8 we play king c7 again trapping the king and forcing him to play b4 and we win this end game stopping this and we know this will be win soon not stalemate like that but just move the king and then we will win now if the same position was black to play then black draws this position yes this is very nice end game same position with black to play and now the idea is that we should not go to the corner if we go king b8 white will again find a way to trap our king let me think how white does it after king b8 so right move is king d8 but let me think what happens after king b8 i think bishop a5 again so king c8 is met by bishop c7 and king a7 also we can play bishop c7 and we can find a way to trap this king somehow there are many ways of course but the idea is to trap the king and force him to play b4 so that is why the drawing technique is to run away from the corner king d8 is the move king d6 after white takes the b5 pawn then we have to go to the corner and then we make a draw so we have to wait until white takes the b5 pawn so we just keep waiting not going in the corner at all king e6 king d8 king c8 bishop e5 again king d8 not going to the corner that is the drawing technique bishop f6 king c7 And black makes a draw and here he just played b4 because a b4 will be met by a3 king b5 so this is what happened in the game now let's see tragic comedy Bishop and games are difficult, the knight and games. Yes. Hello, Akshay. So now, king d1. But we have to understand the ideas, then we can use them in more complex end games. So now, from this position, we know that if we have an extra pawn, we should not go in the corner. We should just stay on the other side of the board. And then white when white takes the pawn on b5 then we go to the corner and make a draw 
white bishop f7. I'm an engineer now. Congratulations, Akshay. Well done. <laughs> Draw with peace up. I'm crying. White to play. And this is a game position between Gutman and Mikenas in 1969 played in Riga. And they say White could have just won this endgame very easily with First move e6 or h6 doesn't matter. e6, king f4, e7, bishop d7, and h6. This is just simple win for white. Just push the pawns. You can start with first move h6 also. h6, king f4, and e6. And next move e7, h7. And this is winning for white. But in the game, white made a blunder. He played bishop g6 thinking that this pawn endgame is winning. And black takes the pawn, king capture f4, bishop capture f5 and here white missed this brilliant move, king capture e5. He does not take the bishop but he takes this pawn and you see now that the h8 is a dark square and this is light square. White played h6, king f6, king c2, and we reach this position that we saw before. And we know this is a draw because black is threatening to play king g5 and like this. And white cannot win this endgame, so sad. <laughs> yes bishop g6 looks so natural but we miss the move that black does not take the bishop but takes the pawn instead next one white king f4 again one more tragic comedy bishop e4 thank you for following guardian x king c7 Black bishop on e2, white pawn h2, g2, black pawns h4, g4, and one more pawn on b7. White to play and win. King e3. Yeah, this is winning position for white. This is tragic comedy. So they write here the win is quite easy. White just needs to play, let's say, king g5, forcing this pawn to move h3. And after g3, white just plays next move bishop f5 and takes these two pawns and wins this endgame.
but instead in the game white played h3 first move and it is a blunder because white should not exchange the pawn his remaining pawn is not in the square of the bishop black played gh3 gh3 bishop a6 king g5 bishop b7 and here instead of taking the bishop black just plays king d7 brilliant move by black and after king h4 black is in time to reach h8 square and this is a draw in the end <laughs> Peace up, I'm crying. White king g2, black king g4, pawns on g3, h4, black pawn on h5, and black bishop on d6. Sometimes blunder makes a draw happy for black. Would always take that bishop in thousand tries. Yes, this looks so natural, yet that is why we miss such moves during games. This is white to play and draw. This is an instructive example. White to play and draw. Black spawn is going this way. And it is not in the square of the bishop, so black will use the technique of stalemate. So let's see the analysis. If king h1, if white plays king h1, No, sorry, sorry, one moment. What is written here? Oh, he played in the game king g1. He played in the game king g1. Black played king h3. And now, if white plays king h1, bishop c5 is lost for white. Again, because white has to play g4. If he plays king f1, bishop c5 is deciding move. Therefore, white resigned here. One moment, let me think what is happening. Oh, now the difference is that white plays king e2, black plays king g2, stopping white from these squares, and then he takes the pawns not with the king, but with his bishop. Oh, sorry, Akshay, I missed it. Akshay, redeem, hydrate and take care. Okay. I just made it today, so I did not know where to check it. <laughs> there you go, thank you. And now, as I was saying, black does not take this pawns with the king because white will go to this side, so he just waits and takes this pawn with the bishop. And white can't do anything and then pushes his pawn all the way down.
thank you for following Bug House. So if this in this end game if white has to draw this he has to play king h2 first move and now black plays king f3 king h3 bishop c5 king h2 bishop d4 king h1 and they say this is a draw <laughs> Very tricky end game. Next is an exercise. So, King c3, Black King f2, Bishop h3, and Pawn h2. White to play and win. This is a famous instructive example. Bishop f1, king f3. The so black just has to reach the corner and then he wins. Uh, I mean, then he draws. <laughs> then he draws and black has to just go there <laughs> shall I tell the answer Nandini knows Bishop f1 black plays king f3 we just have to stop black from going to the corner create a barrier Bishop g4 king e3 Bishop g2 then, bishop g2 then, black will just take take your bishop, no, black can't take the bishop, sorry, black will play king e3, king e3, h4, king f4, and try to go that way. King c4, it's a mistake because black will just play king g1 and this pawn will be lost. So first has to be bishop move, of course. But the question is where? And there is only one answer to this position. There is only one square which is the solution. Bishop g4, king e3, we need to calculate till the end, h4, king f4, bishop g4, not king g2, because h4 will win, that is why black will go from this side, king e3, and then go that side, king f4, white to play and win. Bishop f1, king e3. Black just needs to go to this corner and it's a draw. Bishop d7, because we need bishop e8, you are right. 
that's that's the way to go for it so now let's first understand what is the difference so let's start with bishop f1 why this is not working black plays king e3 h4 and you see that um black just reaches the corner anyway and it will be a draw even if you play like this he just reaches the corner and you can't stop it now let's try bishop g4 king e3 h4 and again bishop has to move bishop is under attack and when he moves let's say d7 he will go all the dark squares and reach the corner so that is why we need to move the bishop where it will not be attacked easily and that is where we play bishop d7 good move thank you for following yeah half and now king e3 f3 anyway we play h4 king e4 if black plays king f4 we just play king d4 and we win this because king has to move and then we play h5 so king e4 h5 king e5 trying to go to the corner at 6 king f6 and this is the barrier we created one moment somebody is on my door i will be back in a moment And that is why we need the bishop on d7 so that we play bishop e8 and we make this barrier and now when the king moves let's say e7 we just play h7 and win but the same way if we play bishop e6 it does not work because now the bishop is under attack and we have to with the idea king g6 and there is no bishop e8 to stop it if white plays bishop f5 we play king f7 and then reach the corner yes never seen this strategy Next one, king c6, black king f3, white bishop g8, pawn h3. White to play and win. Thank you for following Tointo. Redeem, hydrate and take care, okay. So many people redeem, hydrate and take care. I should drink a lot of water today.
this is for Akshay Kul, A-S-D-N-Y-A-S-T, and uh, Y-K-L-O-H-A-N-A. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Miss Pidota. I just I just made this today, and somehow I I'm not getting the notifications as I should. I will work on that and hope I don't miss it. You should mark them complete. One second. And where do I do it? Thank you for following an average chess player. Just a second. Let me quickly see where can I... Mm. Bonjour, average chess player. Thank you for following. <laughs> you probably learned more endgames than Magnus in the past few days. I don't think so, but we are on the right track. So let's see what is happening. Bishop e6, king f4. Again, black has to go to h8. Not like that. But h8 in some... Oof. Okay, to h8 in some way. What about king d6, king f4, king e7, king g5, king f8, king h6, and h4. This looks interesting. This looks interesting. Yeah, idea has to be that we have to move the king closer. Thank you for subscribing to Into and welcome. Do you give online lessons? I give, but very selectively. Not allow king to come in front of the pawn and bishop has to cut the king off. Yes, this is the idea. So we are getting the idea, but we need to know how to use it. So of course not move the pawn. It will just be lost like that. So this is one idea. Bring the king closer. Maybe not pawn h4. Pawn h4 because it will be lost like that. So some king move. Okay, let me see. Let me see the answer. It has to be king moves in d4. Let me try this before checking the answer. King d6, king f4. King e7, King f8, and now 
And now we just wait, I guess. Maybe. Something like that. Is it possible to prevent the Black King's march to the corner? Thank you for following, Satrang. Looks like you are from Turkey, right? Because when I was Turkey, they call chess as Satrang. We have a posture check. Okay. So now white plays king d7. King f4, king e8. King g5, king e7. King g6, king f8. Yes, this was the answer actually, we found it. And king g7. And white wins because white takes control of the corner. We call it Shatranj. Even in India, in Hindi language, we call it Shatranj. And they say white is winning here. Let me play out and see. So king g7, let's say king h4, bishop e here. We make a waiting move. It king goes to h5, so I guess bishop g4. Yeah, like that. And we force the king to go. And we push the pawn. Thank you for following future Magnus Carlsen. The answer is pretty funny. Now next one. White king e2, pawns on a5, b5, black king c5, pawns on a7, d6, and there is bishop on f8. White to play and win. Are you Marathi? Yes, I am from Maharashtra state in India. I speak Marathi at home. I know my Marathi language, then Hindi and English. And I can read Russian, but I don't understand it. I just know the letters. b6 a capture b6 a6 king c6 thank you for following spin span bishop e7 then king takes b5 this pawn is under attack right now hello brian thank you for following a yoga bishop capture d6 then king capture d6 And king is in the square of the pawns, so white can't make a queen.
B6, AB6, A6, King C6, Bishop D6. Thank you for following Peppy D. Looks interesting. B5 then, Bishop C5. Bishop E7, King B5, Bishop D8. That would be a draw. If we just support this pawn, I mean Bishop E7, takes and takes. Black will just go to the corner and make a draw. I'm faster than Indian. So no Fortnite please is saying B6 A B6 A6 King C6 and Bishop captured D6 So I will play B5 then Bishop C5 If king c7 with the idea king b8, you have to play bishop a7. Then again, this would be a draw or not. Yes, because king c4 will be met by b3 and then king goes to b5. Now take b6, play king c6. So after b6, you mean king c6. Hmm. b6 so b6 king c6 bishop d6 would lead to same line after takes an a6 something like that Oh, I think I get some idea. I get some idea. Let me try it out. B6, A capture B6, A6, King C6. And now instead of taking the pawn, how about we go to this and make this barrier? So let's say Bishop E7, B5 and Bishop D8. Stopping the king from going this side towards the pawn. And then black has to move the pawns to b4 and our king can stop both the pawns and when the king moves we play a7 bishop e7 then king c7 so here bishop e7 king c7 and now bishop d6 with a check the same idea but we get an extra tempo is there a difference with it now bishop d6, king c6, not bishop d6, bishop d8 check, bishop d8 then there will be king b8 and black reaches the corner. So after king c7, bishop d6. If you play king c8, I can just move the king and black does not have moves. So king c8 will be wrong. So that is why king c6 and maybe something here. Will you upload this endgame series in YouTube? Okay, I will. I will do it. Harik. So far I'm not doing it, but it's a good idea actually to do that.
thank you for following and now black's idea is to play b5 followed by king b6 so something like that in this variation we got an extra tempo of 10 before so if we play king d3 b5 bishop c5 king here yes this makes a big difference you see because now b4 we're taking b4 and this would be winning for white will you be able to upload so your speed connection is there something wrong with the stream right now i hope not yes it would take time with my connection but we can do it of course hello ducks thank you for following so this looks like an answer for me let me check This is a composition by Gebsman in 1928, b6, a b6. They say here if black plays king c6, we reach the same position after bishop e7 and takes and a6. It is the same line. So anyway, b6, a b6, a6, king c6, bishop e7, good move, king c7. Bishop capture d6 and now we are one move ahead of the line b5 Bishop c5 king c7 Bishop a7 king c6 and king c3 is winning yes well done well done Thank you for following the rough ride. What speed you have? It's better than 10 Mbps. Of course, I changed my internet connection just for chess. So now it's everything is good. Next, white king e6, black king g8, uh, bishop on e5, pawn h6, black pawn h7. Dr. Zweishan Zak, redeem, hydrate and take care. I need a lot of water today. Thank you for taking care of me. Now this is an instructive example. And they say that even though the bishop controls the queening square. So this time this color is the same. This position is still drawn so remember these ideas because this will come up later this is still a drawn position because black's king cannot be a force to come out from this side and white plays king f6 only thing we need to know that we have to play king f8 because if we play king h8 it's a mate in one after king f7 so that is why black plays king f8 and king g8 these two moves and it will be a draw and they say that even if we add more pawns in this position so let's say we add pawns on g5 f4 and black pawns on g6 f5 the position is still draw they say Happy Diwali to everybody. Thank you and we still have some time. We have it on Saturday.
Good day, Senpai. Welcome. Isn't there geofiber in Maharashtra? Maharashtra, yes, but I live in Kolhapur city, which is not the main city in Maharashtra. Of course, they have it in Mumbai and Pune, but not everything in my city. Not all the plants available. Yeah, so anyway, this is the drawn position. Black just needs to play King F8 and King G8. Now, a tragic comedy based on this idea. I think peace up, I win, then draw, I cry. Don't cry. Imagine we are black, uh, we are, we are black there and we are peace down and we are making this draw. So time to be happy about it. Have you visited the fort in Kolhapur, which is very old, which has been converted into a museum? Yes, yes, I have. Not recently, but I have. So this is a game position between Maywald and Bischof, played in 1997. Bishop pair is good. It looks like black is having a big advantage in this position. And in the game, what happened is that white played knight e8, bishop c5, king e1, king e4, and white resigned since the enemy king marches to g2. So black king goes here, the pawns are very strong, bishops are very strong. But there was a simple way to draw this endgame for white. From this position you visited one year back at that time I did not know that you live in Kolhapur yes of course what did you say Fisher in 1997 no it is um, very difficult names May Walt is white and Bischoff is black German Championship White to play and draw Chess to go redeem hydrate and take care. Thank you for following. Leeches ace. So we will hydrate for chess to go. Thank you for following Chandra Hasini. Why is your room so dark? I don't know, it's the same. My curtains are off. Just that's the difference. I thought Fisher came back from dead to play this game. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. So I guess knight d5, bd5, bishop d4, then you keep moving bishop d4, a7, you are absolutely right. Sikweko, that is the idea, that is the idea. So, 
as Sequepo mentioned, this is the idea knight capture d5. We sacrifice the knight, bishop capture d5 and bishop d4. And we just play king g1 and move the bishop. And there is nothing black can do. And if black exchanges this bishop, we reach the position we saw before this. Today Rucha will drink 8 liters of water. <laughs> Doctor's Vaishans have also redeemed. No, you redeem highlight my message, okay. <laughs> I was almost ready to drink more. So one moment. Uh he could have saved the game with the peace sacrifice. Knight d5, bishop d5, bishop d4, in e4, and bishop a7. And white keeps his king at g1 and his bishop on this diagonal, g1, a7 diagonal. And if bishops are exchanged, we have the drawing position we already know. So you see, we learned that position and from that idea, we reach this idea. Please suggest something book or YouTube playlist for players rated 1500. You can start with tactics, leeches, s or endgames and join us every day in this endgame series. Oh no! <laughs> Dr. Zweishenzog, what are you doing to me? You redeemed so many. <laughs> Hydrate and take care. Alright, this is for you. <laughs> Four times you redeemed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. In India, it is right now exactly 6 p.m. in the evening. Now next one is an exercise. Make it 2000, yes? I need to change because everybody has a lot of channel points to make me drink all the stream. So, white king e1, black king g8, Knight d2, bishop d3, pawns on a6, d4, f2, g3, h2, black pawns on h3, g4, f5, c4, and c3, white to play and draw. Yes, these positions are from Dovritsky's book. Where can I get those tactics on leeches? Are you talking about puzzles they post every day? You can find it on leeches. Um, there is an option when you click on learn and then you can click on puzzles and then there you see the tactics section of the leeches. This is a white to play and draw. White to play and draw. Thank you for following. Let me check again. King e1, f2, g3, h2, d4, a6, king g8, bishop d3, c4, c3, f5, g4, and h3. Thank you for following, Soj. Yes, it is right position. I checked it already a few times. Thank you, Steed. 
Stitch Hero and welcome. So right now Knight is under attack. We can't play a7 because black will take this knight first and then stop with bishop e4. I don't see a draw looks that lost. That is the beauty of this position. I'm from Satara. Good to meet you, Liches. Liches Ace. Thank you, the red duck. We have to try to sacrifice the knight somehow. But our pawn should be on f4 if I remember well this idea. If we have pawn on f4 and even if we lost all this side, let's say this is all given up, it will be a draw somehow. We reach king g1. This is very beautiful puzzle. I think I got the idea. I think I got some idea. There is only one mod here. We just started recently. We just started streaming like October, not even one month already. So come on, why to play and draw? Let's find this. Knight c4, bishop c4, a7, bishop d5. It is winning for black because the white pawn stands on f2. And there is no fortress like that. So let me play and show you. Knight c4 takes a7. And now there is no fortress on this side and black will take this pawn first with the king and then go to the king's side. It would be different case if this pawn was on f4 then it's a draw and we get this c3 pawn. How long you playing chess? I've been playing chess since I was six years old. Thank you for the follow, FP East. Yes, I found the idea. Do you want to see? So it is first knight f1. Knight f1 move. Now we are threatening to play king d, this and a7 and king d1. So black will take, of course. Black will take. Bishop capture f1. Now if we play a7, there is bishop g2. If we play king f1, there is c2. And here is where we play this beautiful move f4. And now black cannot take this pawn. Because if black takes this, we play a7. And this is blocked. This diagonal is blocked. So black can't take this. After f4, he just defends this. Let's say bishop g2. And we get both these pawns. We get both these pawns, let's say. And we just run back to this side. And we know this is a drawn setup for white. You should have played in Sangli tournaments in summer. Yes, of course I have played in Sangli many many years. I played almost every year. 
And in fact, I won the women's tournament for like seven or eight times every year. I won, I won it seven, eight times. And also I won the open championship once. Hello, Bobby. Do you have some easy ears? <laughs> but this is the answer. Let me check. Hmm. This is a composition by Smyslov in 1999. There must be some other Smyslov. Yes, knight f1, bishop f1, and f4. And they say it's a draw. So in fact, this position is just Pumus answer. Knight f1, bishop f1, and f4. Its solution is just two moves they write here. So, next one. I think puzzled is faulty. I see no draw. Why why there is no draw? After knight f1, c2 is problem. One moment. c2? c2, then we play king d2. We stop this queen. And then, if bishop f1, again we play f4. Knight f1, c2, king d2, c1, queen. King c1, bishop f1. We play a4 again, right? We play uh, we play f4 again. And we reach the same idea. F4 again, black cannot take because of a7. And here bishop g2, the same idea. And if you try to defend this, it's not possible because we just give this queen. And take this pawn and go back to g1. Black has c pawns, but it will not be for long. He cannot defend it for long. Because we give this pawn and black cannot defend it. King d6. King F8. Thank you for following James Eagles. Bishop D5. Hello, Sabrina. Pawn G6. Pawn G7. Thank you for following. I can't spell it, I'm sorry. Pawns at g6 and g7. And this position we have to understand. They write, here too the draw is obvious. And it would still be draw if we added more pawns. So one moment, this is a draw they say. This is the starting position we have to understand. Yes, Sabrina and Bobby redeemed. Hydrate. So this is for you. Are we looking at fortresses? We are first understanding the ideas and then solving examples based on it. So this is, they say, a draw. Because white cannot make progress in this position. So king e6, we just play king e8. And no way white can get this pawn on g7. Thank you, Summit Chess. And the same way if we added more pawns. So we add more pawns. Um, on h5, h6 f5 f6 
and e4 e5 so look at this position they say even if we add more pawns like this still it is a drawn position Who knows if she's actually drinking water? <laughs> Why will I lie with this? <laughs> I already finished, I can show you. I had this full bottle when I started the stream. And it's almost empty now. You see? It's almost empty. So this is a fortress. And white cannot win this. Because black just keeps moving like that. And no way to make progress. Now based on this idea is next tragic comedy. King e5. Black king g8. Rook b2. Black rook c7 bishop e1 pawns e4 f3 g2 h3 black pawns h5 h4 and g3 with black to play And this is the game between Poligavsky Zakharov played in 1963. And in the game, black played bishop c3 check, king d6, and he captured bishop b2. So they right here, black should have just played the rook, let's say rook a7. And black wins this game very easily with an extra bishop. Black has extra bishop and black wins this endgame. But instead he decided to capture the rooks, exchange the rooks and see what happens. King c7. Bishop b2, king c7. King f7, king d6. King f6, king d5. King g5, king c4. And white reaches all the way to f1. And this is a draw. The king has managed to get home in time from this uh, long route. And white makes a draw in this game. And this game was drawn. <laughs> oh my god. What a position this was. <laughs> yes, black should have kept the rooks and it is a winning for black in many ways of course because of the extra bishop. It will take time but it is winning. But this was a, a wrong calculation by black that he took bishop b2 and went into this, this end game and the game was drawn. And he just does not do anything. He just goes to f1 and then relaxes. White king a4, king b2. Bishop c2, pawn g5, and pawn g7. White to play and win.
Don't send me game requests right now. I'm not accepting, please. Pouring redeem hydrate. So I need to get some more water after this. Okay, I will bring more water. Give me one minute, please. I will be back in one minute. Thank you for following Roderick and Rick. So what is happening? Did we find any ideas? Just walk and take the pawn. H7, King C3. Thank you for following Maze. Bishop is not needed for win. Okay, let's see the analysis. Let's see the analysis. What is happening? Bishop B1, King B3, King B1, and King B3. That looks that looks pretty interesting, really. Might be the answer, Bishop B1. This is composition in 1922 and yes bishop b1 is the right move bishop b1 double exclamation mark but before that let's see what happens with other moves so let's say if white starts with bishop h7 king c3 king b5 king d4 king c6 king e5 In d7 and black plays the very beautiful move g6 look at this move g6 and next move he goes to either king f5 and or king f4 and makes a draw so this was the idea of the position or here if white plays g6 
if white plays g6 then king e6 and black reaches this side and this is a draw that we already know this is the draw that we already know if white tries to play king b4 ignoring the bishop on first move king c2 king c4 does not win king d2 king d4 king e2 king f2 king f4 king f king f4 king g2 and if king f5 then king g3 king g6 and just black is in time so that is why bishop b1 is important move if we play the bishop anywhere else black attacks it on the way black attacks it on the way and then we have to move the bishop and waste a move like that that is why bishop b1 a brilliant move king capture b1 if he plays king c3 if he plays king c3 here king b5 king d4 king c6 king e5 king d7 g6 king e7 and white is in time because king f4 king f6 so after bishop b1 black takes it king b3 king c1 King d3, king e1. And they say this is winning. G1. And g6 right g6 okay g6 all right why not bishop e4 for example with g6 later because black attacks the bishop so if we start with something else except bishop b1 let's say bishop e4 Thank you for following he plays king c3 and now here he attacks the bishop and we have to lose one tempo for moving this bishop yes thank you yellow mellow okay so next one boxer baba redeem hydrate Hello Ginny in the bottle, how are you doing? And thank you for showing us that game. We, before, the, we, before we started the bishop endgames, we analyzed that pawn endgame first, as you suggested. Thank you for following guys, for your support. Now next one. Tell me why king f1, king f3 is winning and f2, f4 is not winning. Mm. Thank you for following. Um, I don't know. <laughs> let me check, let me check which position you are talking about. Mm. So I think king is on f4 and king on f2, right? I really don't know which position that was. Can you check and tell us, no Fortnite please, what is the difference? Because I don't know that exact position right now.
king on f5, black king g7, pawn g6 and bishop on h7. I will ask the engine. Okay. Sorry, you know, Fortnite. From what book do you pick this? It's Dobritsky's Endgame book. It is very amazing that GM like Wesley so could not see the winning move. Yes, also must be short on time. Yes, this was from Speed Championship. So must be very fast games. He is telling why it is not winning if kings are on f4 and f2 and why it is winning if they are on f3 and f1. Okay, okay, I understand what you are saying. Just a moment. Just a moment, guys. So... Pawns were on g5 and g7. Let's check it before we move on. So king on f4 and f2. This was the position. Let's take some help. And now g6. g6 is winning. And what if the position... What is happening? g6 is winning in both the examples. Thank you for following. Because it's winning. Okay, I will check again the solution with the engine, okay? Just bear with me. Just bear with me. I will just check the analysis again with the engine. So this was the position. This was the position with white to play. Let's solve this first. And let's take help of this stockfish. So bishop b1. So what if king b4, king c2, Here he plays g6. I mean, after king f4. What if? Here g6, then there is king h3. How is this winning? The engine says it's not. Because I think the difference is between white to move and black to move. That's what we are missing. Thank you for following. Yeah, we are missing that it is black's move here. We set up this same position, but we set it up white to play. And now after king g2, he is threatening to go king h3 and king h4. Thank you, Soham. Okay, so shall we move on to the next one? 
Yeah, we just missed white to play and black to play. So the position is still legit. No problem. King f5, black king g7, pawn g6, and bishop h7. This is a composition by Ponziani in 1782, and they say this is a drawing posi position since the 18th century. So, this is well known since the 18th century. The bishop cannot escape from its corner, and giving it up leads to a drawn pawn endgame. So this is a fortress and this is a draw. Bishop cannot move and king g5 then we just go king h8. And we cannot play king h6 or king f6 because of its stalemate. And bishop g8 then we just take it and take a position and make a draw. Now based on this idea is the next tragic comedy. White king d5, black king c7, white bishop a7, pawn a5, and pawn b7. Soham and Genie in the bottle redeem hydrate. Okay. So this is a tragic comedy. The game is between Paulson and Metker, played in 1888. And in the game, black in the game, white made a blunder. He played king c4. He played king c4. I have 3000 channel points. Oh no. <laughs> it's going to be a long trail, long Tail of hydrates then please don't kill me <laughs> all right so king c4 was blunter in the game and the brilliant move was b5 and black draws after b5 and after a b6 king b7 we reached the same idea that we saw and this is a drawn position and after king capture b5 we just go king b7 and king a8 and again this is the draw because black king occupies the corner so he could have in the game just played they say king d4 avoiding the c4 square or at least bring the bishop back and then try to attack this pawn King c6, just bring back the bishop, they say. King c6. Bishop b6, king d6. King c4, king c6. King b4, king d7. King c5, king c8. Bishop is a7 to stop this. And okay, it's a long way, but white wins after this idea. Now, next one. So, two more positions for today. Two more positions and then we stop.
king f4 black king f7 rook h8 black rook d1 bishop e4 pawn h5 black pawns h7 and g7 this is also a tragic comedy Why doesn't b6 work? Because uh, white had a6 or yeah, white had a6, right? I don't want to kill her. I like her. <laughs> Thank you for that understanding, Jeannie. The Tamil lad has given us the disadvantages of um, drinking so much water, I guess. Yes. thank you for the compliment does your brother play chess or he forgot after teaching you he plays chess but not so much in tournaments he still follows and uh, keeps up with all the chess tournaments and everything he follows me hello lord vigeta all right so this is a tragic comedy and they say white has good chances for success and this is winning for white. The best way is to play king e5, rook e1, rook c8. And just slowly improve the position. King f8, king d5. And later take on h7. So we need, don't need to calculate this line. But in the game, white made a mistake. White played bishop capture h7. Which looks a very natural move. But this is a mistake. This is a mistake. Again, G5, yes. Look at this same idea. G5, black plays G5 check. And now, if white takes with the king, king G5, in g7 these two pieces are attacked and the bishop is lost if after g5 if the king moves anywhere not accepting the pawn still king g7 and the bishop is lost and if white takes this we just play king g7 and we reach the same setup with black thank you for following own style and they right here, bishop h7 is a blunter after g5, hg, king g7, rook g8, and king h6. There is no way to make progress with white. It turns out that even adding rooks doesn't change the evaluation of this position. White can neither queen the pawn nor free his bishop. Thank you, Wendy Chess. So there is no way white can make progress because he can't move this pawn, he will lose this bishop. And now last position for today. King e1, black king c7, bishop on b5, a3, black bishop on g1, pawns on f2, c4, d5. Black pawns on e7, g2, g4. And this is the most complex position today, so far. From all the positions that we saw, this one is the most complex. So I, I kept it for the last. And this is a white to play and 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 a draw white to play and draw
complex i win this in 20 seconds how do you win this black is threatening to play bishop h2 and queen the position is to find a draw rajin habibi d6 e d6 bishop d6 king d6 c5 king c5 bishop f1 wow wow what a line that is let me think <laughs> you flag opponent so rodin is saying d6 first move takes then bishop d6 so d6 e d6 bishop d6 in d6 c5 takes and bishop f1 wow what a way to stop this pawn and what happens after that let's say i take this king f1 bishop h2 and f3 oh f3 f3 is the move if black takes we play king f2 and if he plays g3 we reach this fortress that we learned just now after king g2 when you see the bishop can't make progress and we can just give up this pawn and this is a drawn set up for white wow well done radin well done let us check This is a composition by Sebot in 1908. They say first they have given the wrong move. If bishop c5 first it is a mistake because bishop h2 and f3 or f4 doesn't matter. To stop this queen, he takes this pawn. Now the threat is bishop g3 and f2 queen. f2 f1. These pawns will move. So white plays bishop f2. And now there is a beautiful idea by Black. He plays Bishop F4. Look at this idea. He cannot play Bishop G3 because then it's a check on our king. So Bishop F4. And he plays Bishop G5 with this idea. Bishop G3. Thank you for following. This is a long line. King d8, King f2, and Bishop e3. And Black wins in this line. But let me understand why Bishop f4 and Bishop g5. Can we just move the king away? Can we just move the king and try to play Bishop g3? Oh, if we just move the king, he will go king d2 and bishop g3 then king here and stop this pawn. That is why we also need to stop the white king from going to d2 and then play this idea. So the correct answer is correct answer is first move d6 e d6 bishop d6 king d6 c5 and bishop f1 the line that we saw and here f3 good move g3 and king g2 that's the draw well done all right so time for us to stop here Let's rate somebody. Thank you for joining and being with me in this end game series. Hmm. 
<laughs> Thanks for stream and don't forget to drink water. Of course. Whom shall we raid? Whom shall we raid? Next stream, I don't know. I will. I have not planned it so far. Okay, just one moment. Let's raid Anna Chess. I see they are playing chess with Tanya and Samai. So let's raid them. Okay, see you next time. Have a great day and keep enjoying chess. Bye.